All right, everybody, welcome back to Get in the Garage. We're a music podcast. We're the, the music, music podcast. podcast. Oh, Goffers. there we go. It is time for a new album review. Jeffrey, can you take the ball and tell us what the new album review is this week? Yes, this is the latest release by Miley Cyrus. It's called Endless Summer Vacation. It's her eighth official studio album. It is 12 tracks. It is 40 minutes long. Perfect. Um, about half the album, six tracks, are produced by Kid Harpoon and Tyler Johnson, the production and songwriting team behind Harry Styles' most recent work. Uh, Mike Will made it, a longtime collaborator of Miley, uh, adds to like maybe two songs production. Max Mirando produces a song or two. Greg Kirsten, who's a big pop producer, we've talked about many times, uh, the Pink Record, et cetera, et cetera, produces a song. BJ Burton uh, produces a song and more. Um, Flowers is the obvious big hit off of this, the album opener. I believe it's still at number one. It has been for weeks. Uh, I like this album. I liked more of it than, or some of it more than other parts of it. But what do you guys think about this album? Uh, I'm here ahead, for sorry. it. I'm here for it. Miley is having a moment right now. She has the number one song in the country, Flowers. Um, I thought this album was re- a really good listen overall. It had a great like flow to it. Um, I liked a lot of the standout stuff on here. And then, like Jeff said, some of the other stuff, I was like, okay, not so much. But um, I thought overall she really knocked it out of the park. And for like a full album i don't think she's achieved anything on this status before i think this is like pure like gold standard for miley right now i feel like she's had some like real bangers in the past um and this is an album i feel like that's going to define the rest of her career i feel like this is a new uh pitch point up yeah this was sort of her go at a concept album in the sense of so if you have Disney Plus, I definitely suggest that you watch the Miley Cyrus Backyard Sessions. She plays a couple of cuts off of the album and gives just small interjections between songs to kind of explain what song means what and so on. One of the things that she had spoken about was that it's conceptually like AM and PM. So this album is chopped up sort of in half in a sense where the sense. in the AM half is much more like you know, lively, sort of uplifting music, kind of things that you would start your day with. And then the PM is sort of like sort of into the night where there's a bit of relaxation, but there's also a little bit of uh, sort of maybe uh, risque behavior and stuff like that. She said that it's more or less a love letter to Los Angeles, where she lives. And I also agree. I think the record was overall a really good record. She had stated that this was more so... I I should say the motivation behind making this record was less on the idea of, you know, album sales and more so from the angle of just the importance of songwriting and what that means to her. I would agree with that sentiment. I think that it translates pretty well on this record. But like uh, Jeff and Luke already said, I liked what I liked, but I didn't like I wouldn't say that I hated, but was just kind of like, "Eh, this is okay." Where I found myself not caring so much was sort of, I guess, what you would dub the PM side of the record. The AM side of the record, I really did enjoy. I like that sort of self-love, kind of uplifting vibe. Uh, The PM side was kind of things got a little bit more, uh, for lack of a better word, maybe a little bit more boring or not uninteresting, but just kind of like, this is okay, but it's a little slow for, you know, because it hits so hard up front, you know, and then it kind of like fizzles out a little bit. Yeah, I thought the first six tracks, this is 12 tracks and then a demo of uh, Flowers at the end on the digital versions, thought the first tr- six tracks are the strongest tracks and then the last six uh starting with violet chemistry on down are just so much more for lack of a better word generic or I uninteresting or same unremarkable same. um still solid songs fine melodies good production but just like nothing memorable to me whereas the first six tracks like kind of bop 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 bop. I really like those first six tracks. Yeah, same here. Like strong. Like really enjoyed those that first half of this album. I really really agree. Um, and like the first six tracks, they have like more of like the upfront character. And then like maybe if like the song like it wasn't so bad in like the later half, it was maybe because like she had already maybe like covered that stylistically, mm. uh, before. But um, I loved the album opener, Flowers. Uh, the number one hit. I think this song is like it has that like kind of disco-y new feel. Has that great violin line that comes in that like catches your ear and like brings the melody into life. Um, I really really like that. Um, 
did you guys like oh i i'm also in love with on this record in the first six songs a uh, handstand where miley cyrus gives that spoken word <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, thing yeah. where she's talking yeah. about like stingrays and manta rays in her friend um, Twitchy and how the, all they could do was dance and it sounds like if Tron was like mixed with like Baywatch that was mixed <laughs> with like sweaty yeah. uh, now we're talking sweat you know sweat. Uh, in that way so yeah, the synth sweat. lead in the center might be the I mean it's one of the highlights of the album might be the best oh, yeah. part yeah, yeah. That, like, it's 40 like an, seconds it's like an like, electro oh, breakdown. Yeah, and it goes up an octave. And you're yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that part. Strongly agree. Yeah. And then lyrically, it's my favorite thing on the record. Um, mm. This song is basically a brag about how well she's doing it in a handstand. And um, <laughs> yeah. it, great songs about doing it. This should be on the list. I feel like it is like really creative and it made me like laugh and giggle but it's like also like got like serious sexy moments to it so um for me this is like the album highlight and i wish more stuff on the record sounded like this because i was like ready to go in this like futuristic tron baywatch thing for 40 more minutes i was like take me on this trip i'm ready to go i yeah. was all about it i feel like what she did really well was kind of like so we covered quite a few rec well we've covered a lot of records but uh of last year you know so we had like the beyonce record we had harry's house i feel like she did a really good job of taking kind of like the highlight sort of moments from those records and kind of like applying them to this record in an, in a in a really well done way too where it doesn't really sound like it's a rip off but it still has that sort of great synthy thing and then uh that song river which um if you watch the disney plus thing it she talks about how she had a party at her house and the only way that you were allowed to enter was if you brought a gay friend um and that was the inspiration behind that and you know, for me, I just thought about kind of like, okay, cool. So, you know, we have this sort of anthemic thing that is, you know, very gay and pride, queer oriented and stuff, which is kind of like the SNC thing that you got from like the Beyonce record. And then the inclusion of Kid Harpoon and Tyler Johnson from the Harry Styles kind of vibe that was happening too, kind of created this like cool mishmash, especially in those first six, seven songs that gives you that that kind of a vibe that i just i thought it was so great uh that great thumping like acoustic piano in uh grape juice off harry's house is also like kind of used in effect here as well on rose colored lenses when it hits into the chorus i was like oh man that is that piano sound from uh grape juice i went and listened to the harry styles record i was like oh yeah they're like using it it wasn't like a copy of it but it was just like a note of like oh that was like a production trick and it works it sounds really great on that song and it's just a stylistic choice i think is is really it works well with the style of songs that she wrote for this record yeah i thought some some of the weaker parts for me um were island which kind of sounded like a country song done in a reggae style um wild card which started kind of country and then became a, a dance track which i thought wild card was all right but it was just kind of blasé in a way um muddy feet i thought was like I saw it featured Sia, and I thought it was going to be this big thing, and then Sia really just does um, like ooze and hums for the last 30 seconds. Um, it has like a Wild West whistle, but nothing else that's that interesting. Yeah. Um, River, to me, was maybe my least favorite song. Oh, I love it. Because it sounded so much like a Gwen Stefani solo song, and I hate Gwen Stefani solo music. See, I was, getting, I was getting like Lady Gaga <laughs> vibes from that one. And I like the choppy synths, which was very like, yeah. go, 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 go. But the rest of the song, I'm like, eh, eh. Um, I do like the closer, Wonder Woman, which is very like Carol King, piano closer type of power song. Um, and then my favorite songs were, I really love Jaded, which every all instruments in production was Greg Kirsten. I really liked Rose Colored Lenses um, with that really dirty driving bass sound. Yeah. Um, some kind of like keys that were like doing these weird solo flourishes. And I read the liar notes. It must be a sax that's like played through a synth distortion thing. It sounds like a so heavy good. metal kazoo. Like so <laughs> good. But it's yeah. so good. One of the best um, production moments yeah. on the entire record. And also like the other feature I thought was amazing. Um, Brandy Carlisle is uh, doing harmony vocals on the song Thousand Miles. But also in a way like I think Miley Cyrus sounds really strong and maybe the strongest she ever has up to this point on this album. But with Brandy Carlisle singing a duet with you, to me it's like, Oh, 
Brandy Carlisle is like one of the five greatest singers on the planet, <laughs> yeah. in my personal opinion. And so it kind of she guy got, got like outshined on that, but it does work. It pairs well, and she's not doing anything other than singing the harmonies. Um, but it was, I guess, I would say it was a great moment to hear Brandy Carlisle bring some of that like higher type of thing against Miley Cyrus is very like husky, like grindy type of singing mm. style. Um, but overall, great. I thought really good, especially first half of the album. Um, amazing album cover, I'll say that, with the strong and sexy like holding up from a like a trapeze or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you like yeah. like that little Indian like boom 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 in the uh what was that was that in thousand, thousand miles, miles yeah in the beginning of it? It reminded yeah. me of the Shania Twain album up where it has like all the like the Indian like influence on it. Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was mandolin, but it must have been just done on synthesizer because in the credits there was nothing I was, credited. Yeah. So. I thought that was an interesting choice. That uh, song though, harmonica at the end. With the uh, with the boob, boob super boob, cool. Boob, boob, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that Politics. was really Paul Simony. Yeah, uh, yeah right. right. It, I thought that was interesting. Uh, I agreed with you like the songs that you didn't really like. Uh, Island except River. I love River. River is one of my favorite okay. songs in this record. Um, River to me sort of sounds like a dance banger, and I can get down with it. Um, look up what it's about. It's uh, a, another handstand. <laughs> um, so very very much in that vein, and I love that song. But um, Island for me was a little like. Beach Boys Kokomo. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm like, this, well, this is this endless summer vacation. But uh, yeah, very Kokomo, where it's like, it's, I like it the first three si- times I hear it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't amazing. hate it. But it's it, pronounced Island. But it just didn't like ring for me in that way. And then, like you said too, like Wild Card, I felt like Wild Card was jaded, done different a little bit. Sure. Um, and uh, Muddy Boots, you know, was yeah. like the. I, they weren't like bad listens, but um, you know they're just kind of like more generic, like you had said. So yeah, I would agree too. I think that those we we kind of are unanimous on our our lower points. I loved rose colored lenses. I thought that her knack for sort of this storytelling thing, where she kind of gives this image of like you know drawing the shades down in the hotel room, like we're just here together, like let's imagine like the world through rose colored lenses. I like the imagery of that. I thought Jaded was cool, although you know I can't help but think of that Aerosmith song. I want to ask Miley, <clears throat> did you listen to Just Push Play when that came out? Did you, were you a fan of Aerosmith? Let me know. Let us know, Miley. We know you're listening. Hit me up. Um, but yeah, obviously Flowers was great. Yeah, the bass throughout the entire record I thought was just absolutely great sounding. It has that dude like thing. It's like mm. it sounds so so good. I love the song You, which was kind of a switch up to things because that was like I think it was the only song in six. Oh, yeah, so that's like it a gives you ballad. Yeah, so it yeah. gives you that sort of like old school soul flavor yeah. underneath I'm, her singing. I'm glad you brought that one up because that was like yeah. a great moment on this record where it was like Miley Cyrus like um, burned down piano singing about like this is who I am and this is the kind of love I want and this is me right, on a right. bash and that's what makes this record more my it's like she really let herself. You you got to see who she was, and she like formed it around really great listenable songs. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and also, yeah, I did enjoy Wonder Woman, although I was definitely getting like the Sarah McLaughlin "Arms of an Angel" vibe on that track. Um, you know, but I think the message behind it is Don't great. Know. You know, it's about you know like uh, strong women in her life, more specifically her grandmother, who I guess from 2008 up until 2018 ran the Miley Cyrus fan club originally from the Hannah Montana set and then ended up moving it to her apartment and and Billy Ray can't buy her house uh, well listen the Billy achy Ray. breaky money doesn't go far <laughs> no Come no on. yeah no he, he yeah. achy breaky broke the bank grandma wants it uh this <laughs> so yeah so and that's you know and I humble and, and being somebody who was you know raised predominantly by women in my family you know I uh I really enjoy that sentiment and I like that I also like how it's just piano and vocals there's a really great take of that in the backyard sessions where so i think it's the only one that she's not actually in the backyard she's kind of in like a room where she's got the pianist in the back and he's just playing the chords and she kind of gives this really really nice delivery of the song so um but yeah i would say violet uh chemistry was probably i wrote it down as that is my least favorite song yeah on the just album. too simple uh, yeah i'm just a like little, eh. a little shake off of that lavender lavender haze too it's kind of like you know violet chemistry lavender. i was i feel i felt that a little yeah, bit here yeah, too yeah. so i was like all right yeah, it but overall, the same vibes, but I think it was a fantastic album, man. And Thirty-year-old Miley Cyrus now too. Yeah. Same age as me. She sings in a way I'm wondering and hoping her voice doesn't give out in ten years, because she pushes her voice. Yeah, it sounds good on this record, like ninety-five percent of the time. But yeah, she's. 
I'm here for it. Let's have like a yeah. uh, gravelly Miley Cyrus singing like Johnny Cash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when she's 43 years old. I hurt myself yeah. today. Yes, I'm, I'm here for I it, Miley. I myself flowers. Call me when it happens. I'll produce. Is this Bob Dylan? <laughs> I'll be, yeah, Bob Dylan. Do that cover, the Sinatra <laughs> covers Cyrus. album. You call me. Um, yeah, how how right. are some ratings of this album? Yeah, let's um, go. Really liked the first six songs. Um, was second six songs were fine. Um, so taking the averages of like what I thought was a nine and then like a six and a half, I'm gonna say this is seven and a half or an eight. Uh, let's say eight. I'm saying this is an eight because I liked more than I didn't like. I'm gonna agree with Jeff. I'm gonna go with a solid eight on this. What I liked, I really, really liked. And the stuff that I didn't like, I feel like it. I didn't not like it enough to dock it more points. Yeah. So I'll go with an eight. Uh, I'm going 7.7 7 <laughs> on this one, a little pitchforky, yeah. uh, you know, because I could use without that, like, Kokomoe Island, and I could use, like, without, like, you know, one more of kind of, like, the done-through stuff already. So uh, I'm going a little pitchforky on this, 7.7. 7. That's my rating. All I'm right. Sticking to it. There you have it, folks. What did you guys think? Did you like the album? Did you love the album? Alex? Two things. Flowers reached a lot of streams in its first week breaking um some streaming records and now is almost over 700 million plays on spotify Whoa. it was originally released on january 13th of 2023 um so it's been out for a minute but it did reach really high peaks early on in its uh yeah. promotion and one other thing i would like you guys to do is a recent segment we did was uh duchess uh Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Duchess, Duchess, Duchess Diva, Diva or Duchess Queen? Diva or Queen. I'd like you guys to rate Miley Cyrus. I was thinking Diva, of Duchess this or Queen. while we I was listening to this album. I was like, is Miley Cyrus a Duchess, a Diva, or a Queen? Um, I'm going to say she's solid Diva territory, uh, working her way up to a Queen. I feel like she is like Queen in training. She hangs out with a lot of Queens. So Yeah, I'd say she's a Diva too, just because I feel like she has like diva energy she does whatever the hell she wants to do she doesn't care she'll flip you the bird if you disagree with what she says or does she lights joints on stage in the middle of performance oh yeah so it's not really like the because queen status is like it's queenly you know what yeah I mean? it's so very it's queenly very, very it's diva. very queenly you're right yeah, she's very, very diva, diva. she's just kind of like you know in your face uh, i think uh diva she has gone through many transformations in the past 15 years and i'm excited to see what she has next I really like the album before this in 2020, Plastic Hearts, which is more of like a Joan Jett, Pat Benatar type of music. And now she's going to like kind of poppy disco type stuff. Uh, we'll see where she goes next. I'd love a country record. Uh, same like a here. Dusty Springfield, like soul country record would be cool. Yeah. Um, but also wherever she goes, I'm excited to see where she, what happens. You too. Here, here. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and share the podcast with all your friends, your family members, and your local ski enthusiasts. Do it. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.